Welcome to season two of All Go If You Go, a Save the Redwoods League podcast. We're building community and illuminating how Californians from all walks of life think about and experience nature and conservation in the Redwoods and beyond. I'll go if you go, because when we explore together in community, the experience is all the more powerful. The sun is shining, the birds are cheeping, and... Ah yes, the skateboarders are skating. What is it about skating, about being a skater, that makes it so cool? Style? Heck yeah, but more than that, Skateboarding means freedom, to move, to express yourself, to goof around and fall and get back up again. But if the idea of slamming while learning ollies, kickflips and grinds sounds intimidating, skating can also be just rolling around and having a good time. And that's just what I did recently with my new friends from the org Skate Like a Girl one sunny day in Santa Cruz, California. To skate like a girl, skateboarding also means a diverse, inclusive community of awesome women, trans, and non-binary people who love to build each other up and have tons of fun. On today's episode, I'll be talking to Skate Like a Girl's Kim Woozy, Sam Ricardo, and Jay Ledesma. Before we headed to the forest of Nicene Marks together, I joined a Skate Like a Girl meetup at Mike Fox Skate Park in Santa Cruz. While some girls were dropping into the bowl, Other skaters were cheering each other on practicing tricks or just rolling around in a straight line between the fences on the blacktop. Wait, that was me. I hadn't been on a skateboard since early pandemic days when I found an old skateboard, tried to do a moving ollie, and fell and scraped my knees. But at the meetup, I had so much fun. For once, I didn't feel any pressure to be good or like I had to earn the right to be on a skateboard at a skate park. It was just laughs all around. Plus, that tingly good feeling in your feet when you skate. And if you've ever been on a board, you know what I mean. As I learned from Kim during our conversation, the physical act of skateboarding can actually be emotionally healing and good for your brain. And there's plenty of neuroscientific research to back that up. Not to mention, skating gets you outside and moving, both of which are good for overall health and well-being. I could go on about skateboarding, but let's just hear it from the Skate Like a Girl squad. Grab your boards and I'll meet you under the redwoods by the river in the forests of Nicene Marks State Park which is the ancestral lands of the Owasos, Ohlone, and Amamazin people. Okay, catch you there. Uh, my name is Kim Woozy. I use she, her pronouns. I'm 37 years old, and... I am Chinese via Taiwan. My parents are from Taiwan. My grandparents are from China. I was born here in the Bay Area, and I have been skateboarding pretty long, but on and off. Got on a skateboard for the first time when I was like 12, didn't really know what to do, didn't have community, and then ended up working in the skateboarding industry and then picked it back up later um, when I found Skate Like a Girl here in the Bay. Uh, my name is Jay. I am 24 years old. I am trans, masculine, non-binary. I am Mexican. I definitely connect to my uh, roots and where I come from. And I've been skateboarding for 17 years. And yeah, I describe myself as a skateboarder even before all of that. My name is Sam Mercado. I use they, them pronouns, and I am a first-generation Filipino-American, a first-generation college graduate. My first instance wanting to learn how to skate was watching TV as a little kid, like three or four years old, and my family and I would watch The Simpsons together. And if you've seen it, in the theme song, there's Bart Simpson and he's like cruising around town, like jumping on cars and poles and stuff with his green skateboard. And I remember seeing that and thinking it was the coolest thing. So I got my first board when I was six, tried to pick it up, wasn't able to stick with it until on my 25th birthday, my sibling Glaw, shout out to Glaw, got me a board. And a couple months later, I attended my first Skate Like a Girl program and I've been skating ever since. What is Skate Like a Girl? Skate Like a Girl, we are a 501c3 nonprofit. We are in three chapters, uh, three chapter cities, Seattle, Portland, and the Bay Area. 
and our mission is to create an inclusive community through skateboarding and we emphasize leadership, social justice, and really at the end of the day, we use skateboarding as the, the platform of the vehicle to develop young people, um, create leadership opportunities, build community, and ultimately just give folks a place where they get to be their whole selves and feel like they're a part of something. And so skateboarding is the fun byproduct, but at the core, we're a community and we do our best to create as many spaces as possible to invite folks who historically aren't showing up in skateboarding. And oftentimes those are people who are also marginalized in other spaces in society. What Skate Like a Girl really does is just practices what everyone preaches in skateboarding, which is really that the foundations of like modern skateboarding are all about non-conformity and like individualism and like skate with friends and have community. But at the end of the day, your relationship with your board is just completely unique to you. So with that being said, who am I to say, to be a skater, you have to look this way or like you have to do these tricks. It's really just, you deserve to be here just because you're here. And why skateboarding? Well, it is just really fun. <laughs> it's a piece of wood with four wheels. Um, anyone can do it. And there's something about it that's just so simple that I think really brings people together. And once you kind of get past those initial fears and I would say maybe some social norms or barriers. It's addicting. I mean, push to heal. They've done research around how skateboarding can be therapeutic, especially for young brains who have been through trauma. Uh, you can search them push to heal, but essentially there's something about the equilibrium, like in your ear, the, the way that the motion is when you're riding, um, you know, across concrete, the vibrations like cause the liquids in your ear to vibrate in a certain way and it actually releases endorphins so like we literally say it's fun <laughs> but it literally like is something that increases your joy and, and happiness there's this experience of like accomplishment and it is hard like you will fall we all have fallen a lot but there's something about that where i think it's addicting because you kind of feel a sense of pride and courage that sort of gets ingrained in you and then it is really just sort of addicting to keep doing it because I think if you can like learn things on a skateboard you can take on any challenge in life. How has skateboarding changed your relationship with the outdoors or just being outside in general? It's one of the few activities where you have to be fully present to do it. There's a lot of things you can multitask. You see nowadays a lot of people you know, walking while on their phone or like waiting in line or even riding your bike while looking at your phone or whatever. But skateboarding is truly one of those things where you are not going to do well if you're trying <laughs> to multitask, like you really got to be present. So I think it's become one of those few places where you're fully present. And I think the other piece just in the past few years um, with the pandemic, really appreciating being outside and like the privilege that we have, you know, being able-bodied to actually just roll around, you know? Similarly, I think to Jay and Sam, like they worked in the skateboarding industry, there was a lot of inherited narratives around, you have to be a certain skill level in order to be a skateboarder or part of the culture. Mm -hmm. um, and what I really appreciate about the past few years is that, you know, that concept is actually, you know, I would say gone out the window for a lot of reasons, but we're all just so grateful to like be outside, not on Zoom, because my <laughs> job is largely on Zoom. So I don't know, I appreciate it so much. And I think we always say, you know, thank you skateboarding at the end of our programs, because it is like genuinely a tool for us to connect with ourselves, connect with outside. And mm -hmm. I think you know, as we get deeper and deeper in these crazy innovations, especially living in Silicon Valley, um, being outside and being present is just absolutely necessary. And uh, it just feels so good, you know, so yeah. important. And speaking of being able-bodied, so when I was looking for a location to come out and do this interview, I was looking for redwood parks with pavement or ADA accessible trails, because that's somewhere you can roll a skateboard on, which got me thinking about skateboarding with disabilities is that a thing at all yeah actually um so with the introduction of the skateboarding into the olympics for the first time in tokyo it also was introdu introduced into the paralympics and so there's this amazing whole new um kind of structure for folks who um you know don't have maybe all their limbs and also 
um, other disabilities, like there's blind skaters, um, deaf skaters, so, or hard of hearing skaters. So it's been really cool because again, like, you know, it's this such a simple piece of wood with four wheels, but it really is adaptable in so many ways. Um, and there are skaters that don't have legs that skate and they're amazing. They're way better than me. Like it's insane. <laughs> it's so inspiring to watch, but it's, I think the coolest thing is that a skateboard is more like a, a paintbrush to a canvas versus like, you know, has all these requirements to do it. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like use it however you want. And like, that's what makes it fun and cool. I heard someone say skate camp earlier. That was me. And I want to hear about it. So skate camp, it's as it sounds. If you've ever been to a sleepaway camp as a kid, it was this week-long event from Monday through Friday where... Where was it? It was in the Sequoia National Forest at the YMCA skate camp. Like parks and ramps and just like skatable facilities just like out by the Sequoia Lake and just in nature and surrounded by trees. And so um, last year, Skate Like a Girl held their first ever one for adult women and or trans skaters. So it was about 60 campers and 20-ish staff and volunteers. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we just all came together and hung out in the forest and we skated sometimes and we went to the lake and we built campfires and just had all of the um, you know, traditional sleepaway camp experiences, but with an amazing community of women and or trans skaters. Like my face hurt from smiling so much. It, <laughs> I never had a bad day. I never got to go to like sleepaway camp. That wasn't a thing. If you're Mexican, you barely go to your like relative's house. That's how my mom was. So we couldn't even afford summer camp. Well, that was one of the goals of camp was to create that experience that a lot of people didn't have growing up, right? whether it was because of your you know, family or your culture, um, just because you didn't get to do that when you were younger doesn't mean that it's like any less wanted or desired. So that's what I loved is that we had adults, the average age I think was 33. We had adults literally like, we all were like 10, 10 years old again. Um, and I think we just kind of took everything that was our dream week and just put it all into one. So it was like nature, there's no internet there. So we fully unplugged and then skateboarding, and then of course, all the community activities, like singing and campfire and swimming and yoga. So it was really like the dream world that we want to live in. I wish every day, <laughs> every yeah. day could be like that. Out there among the giant sequoias. Yes, oh, yeah. sounds like the dream. That's what makes um, YCA, YMCA Skate Camp specifically just such a magical place, because even if you took away all the skateboarding, it's still magical, right? So yeah. you have, you know, that's more traditional, like kind of outdoor camping experiences, but it's that plus the skateboarding, which I think everyone left like with some of their molecules rearranged in some way. Like we all got there as one person and we left as like some different version of ourselves. And like, that's what made it so special. I feel like skateboarding can seem pretty intense, but the way that I've heard it described here today and what I saw at the meetup earlier, it seems so playful. And the space where you can really explore and you don't have to be perfect on the board because no one is and everyone has their own way of doing it. And it sounds like there's a lot of freedom of just being out there. Absolutely, yeah, that's what we, I think people that skateboard know that, but again, like it hasn't always been portrayed that way. So we hope to like make sure that's really elevated. So anyone that has any sort of preconceived notion might come and actually experience something totally different. Um, because yeah, at the end of the day, it is fun, it's play, and that's something that everyone can relate to. And I think similarly with like outdoor activities, you know, which you might see in mainstream is like someone summiting Mount Everest and you're like, oh my God, I could never do that. But just going outside in your neighborhood on a walk or the, your local park, that's being a hiker, that's being outside, you know? It's the same thing with skateboarding where it's like, look, if you have your board, and you're stepping on it, that you're a skateboarder. I want to hear a little bit about what has surprised you all about learning to skate. Yeah, like skateboarding made me be more social, have more friends. Like, it also made me realize that our bodies can do so much. Like, 
physically, skateboarding is so demanding. Uh, emotionally, I've cried uh, for like getting certain tricks, but at the end of the day, like my friends are like, you got it, like next try. Like don't, like, don't stress about it. Don't like, like just take a deep breath and don't put that anger. Like frustration comes and goes, but at the end of the day, when you land that trick or that line, or even just learn how to skate, like you feel amazing. You feel like I can do anything. I've seen that with like adults. I've seen that with like people that are like 60 and they're just like learning how to push and the smile and that energy, like it, you feel it. You're falling and failing all the time. And I think that's ultimately what makes it so cool is because anyone who's willing to fail consistently all the time, they're failing more than they succeed, right? Because you try a trick 30 times and you land it once. Like there's something about that where I think I would love for all of us in our daily lives to just embrace failure that way. And also something else that surprised me is just that skateboarders are like super goofy. So like- I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, as someone, you know, who's really shy and just like seeing like the image of the skateboarder being like super intense and gnarly. And it's like, yeah, a lot of skateboarders are super gnarly, but then like when they get off their board, they'll just do the stupidest stuff. And like, but they're just like really fun to be around. And like, I wouldn't have experienced that if I had never done stuff with skate like a girl and felt like I could be part of that too. I want to hear a little bit about injury. So if you're falling that much, is there a way you can protect yourself? Simplest answer, pads. Knee pads, elbow pads, wrist guards, helmet. At all of our Skate Like Girl, our Skate Like Girl programs, you know, for youth 18 and under, we require helmets. We recommend full pads. For adults too, I'm like, your brain is valuable. And then just taking it slow. Like you don't have to be gnarly. A lot of people think that in order to skate, they have to like do some crazy things. But in reality, it's like, we, we have a saying, skate slow and lives, instead of like, shred or die, you know, or live fast, die young. We're like, no, no, skate as long as possible. And that means like being mindful of the risk assessment and like what your brain is telling you. Explore Redwoods is your portal into California's magical coast, Redwood and giant sequoia forest. Visit exploreredwoods.org to learn what's available in more than 100 Redwood parks and plan an unforgettable adventure. From hiking and biking trails to camping to swimming holes, this web-based app will get you there. Visit ExploreRedwoods.org. We're nearing the end of the episode, so you know what that means. It's time for our lightning round. Okay, we're going to go through two rounds of questions. So I'm going to start with Shay. What is your favorite Redwood Park? Skate camp. Skate camp. <laughs> yeah, Sequoia I'm going to say Skate Camp. Sequoia, it's magic. I love you, Kim. What is your favorite karaoke song? I have to go with a WAF themed for non blondes. What's mm-hmm. up? Because that is like the anthem of WAF and therefore the anthem of Skeet Like a Girl. All right, Sam, what's your favorite condiment? I don't know. I'm a spicy mayo kind of person. Nice. Emily, what album do you have on repeat right now? Hotels Motels by Jasmine Sullivan. Okay, Jay, what's a good movie you've seen recently? I just went to go see the Beatles get back their rooftop concert. Oh, nice! I, and now I'm a, just in a spiral just listening to the Beatles, so I recommend go see it. Kim, what is your order when you go get pho? Ooh, that's a good one. I thought you were gonna say In and Out. Uh, <laughs> I just like go for the know? classic, like beef slices, rare beef, and I definitely put sriracha on there, squeeze the limes in, bean sprouts, all of it, and then definitely spring rolls. Nice. But I love pho. We should go. We should go. <laughs> um, Sam, what's your favorite activity to do outside of skateboarding? I really like to spend two hours just cooking a really good meal. Nice. It's like skateboarding where I feel like it grounds me and it just is all consuming because there's like you know, visuals and I like being able to chop things with my hands and like see all the colors and also just smell all the good smells. And I like being able to, you know, nourish people that I care about. And it's creative too. And it also, you know, I can use my favorite condiment when I get so. <laughs> spicy mayo. Yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite article of clothing? Ooh. Socks. I noticed you have cool socks. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you all for being here, Jay, Kim, Sam. Shout out to all the birds that have been chirping, chiming in, and the creek that's running just behind us down the hill. Thanks. Thank you, Emily. (laughs) During the Skate Like a Girl meetup, I won some skateboard trucks in a drawing. 
Trucks are those metal parts that attach the wheels to the board. I was so excited, but that also meant that I needed all the rest of the parts, too. I didn't need to stress about it long, though, because Jay generously offered me a free deck and wheels, and Kim hooked me up with a free pair of skate shoes right then and there. Apparently, that's a thing that happens in the skate community, sharing gear so everyone has access. Amazing! My heart is full from everyone I've met so far through Skate Like a Girl and the way they welcomed me with open arms into the world of skating. Huge thanks to Kim, Sam, Jay, and Skate Like a Girl. One of my biggest takeaways from making this episode is that it's never too late to learn something new. So here's my invitation to you, all you listeners who think skating is cool but have been too afraid to try. You can be a skater. On a skateboard, you can be whoever you want, you can skate however you want, and wherever you want, even in the redwoods. And, like most good things in life, it's even better with friends. <laughs>